Story Time. I am your Story Time host, Miss Nikki. Today's read aloud titled Radiant Child introduces us to one of America's most charismatic painters and my favorite artist of all time, Jean Michel Basquiat. Like so many people, I am fascinated with this intriguing artist and his artwork. In fact, the hoodie that I'm wearing depicts one of his paintings. Isn't this cool? I love the color combinations, the energy, and the layers of meaning in his artwork. Today, we will learn how young Jean-Michel began his art career as a street and graffiti artist in New York. And we will also learn about the things that inspired him to start painting. Let's read and find out more. Radiant Child, the story of young artist Jean-Michel Basquiat, written by Javaka Steptoe. Somewhere in Brooklyn between hearts that thump, double dutch and hopscotch, and salty mouths that slurp sweet ice, a little boy dreams of being a famous artist. In this house, you can tell a serious artist dwells as he sits at a table with pencils scattered everywhere. Jean-Michel draws from morning until night with a serious face amid a storm of papers. He refuses to sleep until he has created a masterpiece. At night, Images enchant Jean-Michel's mind, and he wakes from his dreams to add one more line. His drawings are not neat or clean, nor does he color inside the lines. They are sloppy, ugly, and sometimes weird, but somehow still beautiful. His art comes from his mother, Matilda, a Puerto Rican woman who designs and sews, cooks and cleans, and makes the house look like a stylish magazine. But most important, she lies on the floor and draws with Jean-Michel on his father's old work papers. From her, he learns that art is not only in the poetry books she reads to him, or in the theatres and museums they visit. Art is the street games of little children, in our style and the words that we speak. It is how the messy patchwork of the city creates new meaning for ordinary things. While visiting the museum, they look at his favourite works of art. Reading the story behind each artist, Reading the story behind each work, this is how Jean-Michel learns what it means to be a famous artist. Back at home, he creates art on the floor as his father, Gerard, plays jazz records. Mama Matilda cooks a rose con pollo and calls Jean-Michel mi amor. The energy and life of the city can be felt in each line of his drawings. As time goes by, Jean-Michel learns that art has a healing power. After a car accident, he is scared and confused. Matilda gives him a book to calm his fears. It is filled with pictures of bones, skulls, and other body parts. Jean-Michel draws from it until he knows it all by heart. He is no longer afraid. Back at home, Jean-Michel's body heals, but his heart breaks. His mother's mind is not well, and the family breaks. She no longer lies on the floor and draws with Jean-Michel, but sits by the window singing only to birds. Jean-Michel is confused and filled with a terrible blues when Matilda can no longer live at home. 
He tries drawing the terrible out of his blues, but things are not the same. As Jean-Michel grows older, he visits his mother when he can, always bringing his artwork to show, telling her that one day it will be in a museum. When I am a famous artist. A teenager now, Jean-Michel decides, Papa, I will be very, very famous one day. With a sly look, a twinkle in his eye, Jean-Michel leaves Brooklyn for New York City, the Lower East Side, a concrete jungle where only the tough survive. During the day, dressed in a green jumpsuit splattered with paint, Jean-Michel stays with friends, sleeping on couches and floors, leaving a barrage of collages and poem filled papers everywhere he goes. At night, Jean-Michel spray paints the walls downtown with poems and drawings that catch the eye of artists, gallery goers, and passers-by. Under his art, he signs the name Samo instead of Jean-Michel. Everybody wants to know who is Samo. Samo moves from street corners to art gallery walls with powerful color composition and line, collaging and painting on anything he can find. His art is still not neat or clean and definitely not inside the lines, but somehow still beautiful. With his magical charm, Jean-Michel draws a crowd, but when it's time to work, he prefers to be alone with the radio and TV on full blast. Now, in expensive suits, splattered with paint, he flips through stacks of magazines and open books and paints into the night and sometimes for days at a time while sounds and images jump into his head. Jean-Michel, an artist among artists, never doubts one line, creating from a soundtrack that is all his own. People describe him as radiant, wild, a genius child, but in his heart he is king, so he draws crowns for himself and others he admires. A grown man now, with the art world in his hands, Jean-Michel still visits his mother when he can, and at his most important shows, Above all the critics, fans, and artists he admires, the place of honor is his mother's, a queen on a throne. He is now a famous artist. Motifs and symbolism in Basquiat's work. Like many artists, Basquiat used motifs which is reoccurring subjects or ideas in his paintings. See if you can find examples of these motifs throughout the book. For Basquiat, crowns represented many things, such as power or strength, and he often gave crowns to others in his artwork as a sign of respect. Eyes often represented remembering, seeing or understanding the past or the present. Cars, trucks, and airplanes often symbolized Basquiat's childhood and the car accident that badly injured him. The End Sadly, Jean-Michel Basquiat's life and work was tragically cut short when he died at the age of 27. Even though he no longer is with us, his art continues to impact and influence our world today in music, poetry, fashion, and film.
I hope that this story inspires you to keep exploring the world of art and artists. There are so many inspiring people who have done amazing things and I love learning about them. And I know that one day you are going to do some amazing things too. Thank you for listening. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other.